the whole world is under attack. Hello, and welcome to my film, again. I'm still international award-winning documentary filmmaker, Linda Baron Charles III, and this is my film about the band Electro Cult Circus, part two. great job on this documentary but i gotta ask man is there anybody that you can get to do like a positive testimonial about electro cult circus excuse me ma'am can, can i get you to say uh, i love electro cult circus fuck off could you say i love electro cult circus get the fuck out of here what do we what do we got to do to get someone to say something positive about us yeah i i've been trying casey but uh honestly you're gonna you're gonna need a more of a budget i'm, I'm gonna need some money yeah, money. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Sure. Just say, I, I love Electric Cult Circus. I love it, sure. We may never figure out what Electric Cult Circus is, but we can find out how it all got started. Come with me. How and where did Electric Cult Circus get started? Defiance, Ohio, a great, great place, place to live. To live. Yeah. Hello. I'm standing in Defiance, Ohio. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, what's well, the question again? <laughs> Where did the name Electro Cult Circus come from? I think we lived on First Street across from the Dirt Fighter. And um, that's actually when we came up with the name, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that I said something about how we were like a circus or, or like a cult. Yeah, and then it came up with a electric cult circus, I think, at that point. Full of about 20 or 30 orphan musicians. Um, Casey and myself included, and Matt Bauer, and my god, a million others. <laughs> and we just kind of gravitated to each other, obviously, for many different reasons, not just music. I had been playing with Casey pretty much since I was... 17 years old, junior in high school, in some band or another. Uh, so we started writing little songs together, and before we knew it, there was 20 musicians involved. Uh, 
two things of note happened in 2001. Uh, 9-11 and Electro Cult Circus was formed. start this shit why did we start this shit boredom boredom's number one live in a small town nothing to do but drugs and sex and rock and roll this is me getting my first guitar for Christmas uh, from my parents whom I love um, I still play like that My mother is responsible for giving us a practice space. My father is the one that I got most of my musical influence from and my desire to play music and enjoy music. We tried to get an interview with Casey's father, but uh, no comment. We grew up in a small town, there was not much to do. So um, me and my friends would just make little movies. We had a public access show on DC TV called The Silly Goose Show, and that's where we got a lot of our pranking out, which ended up kind of becoming a prototype for ECC. No, I gotta pop you, I gotta do it. And I was really influenced by little rascals and poor kids entertaining themselves with art. What was it like performing at Spanky's? So Spanky's is a biker bar, um, and at night we'd kind of take it over. Absolute chaos. As usual, it was wait till the last minute and try to find a PA. We had to fill up four hours of material, and there were some real magic moments. Here I am standing in front of Spanky's Bar and Grill. Spanky's is a shitty dive bar, which is my favorite type of bar, and we would play there maybe monthly, um, just get all our friends to come, but those shows were strange, because I always remember at the beginning of the shows, you'd have all the biker people that wanted to hear ACDC and whatnot, and the, the women from the 80s with the big 80s hair, and they'd be walking right up to the stage and telling us we suck, and then by the end of the night, it'd be all of our friends dancing around, tripping, and just doing drugs and saying we were great. So it was a very weird sea change of sorts. So our last show, the, <laughs> the toilets were out of order and we had raw sewage dripping on us. What the heck is the schizo show? I really loved uh, about the Schizo Show was the unpredictability factor, which carried through from Blue Eyed Gunslingers to ECC to Schizo. So the great thing about it was I could work it into the live portion of the show. Uh, we could do the live skits, uh, two old whores and all these kind of insane things. Or I could 
turn over the entire intermission and we would have some a live game or more skits or videos. You kind of never knew what that was going to be. Okay, Ren, tell us a little bit about the early days of the Schizo Show. Uh, recording videos at Fab, the production compound. I thought it was so cool the way that they did the green screens everywhere. They had multiple stages and I was just happy as hell to be there. <laughs> all about the fun of it like coming up with the most obscure concepts and everybody being on board and like yes let's do it let's make it where's your baby <laughs> we did some things that are absolutely not pc oh, oh no oh 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 no i remember how funny that was at the time Rumor has it that everybody found out that they had gotten their money from running a prostitution ring. You do all the special stuff, all the crazy things. Oh, all right, all right. And from drug dealing. Did you know about that? I had no idea. I thought they won the lottery or something. <laughs> Abortion clinics. Is this what you fucking want, Charles? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Phil. I'd like to think I'm a pretty good director, like pretty nice, fair director. Cut! Hey, what did I tell you? You say show at the same time as the fucking kids. Gone! Cut! Cut! Stop crying! So rumor has it you and Mondo have always had a pretty intense working relationship. Ow! Ow! Uh -oh. Um, can you talk to us about that? How how are things now? Yeah, me and Mondo, um, we've always had a pretty complicated relationship, but I think all the uh, bruises have been healed, and I think we're, we're we're pretty much past all that. I think there's some real love between us. You'd have to ask him. We attempted to reach out to Mondo, but we just got this dick pic in response. What happened at the Independence Day Festival? My first experience with Electrical Circus was uh, Independence Day about seven or eight years ago. Uh, this is a music and arts festival in downtown Columbus. And I hear this woman shouting from an alley and she says, uh, hey, uh, come this way, we've got half-naked women. Yeah, Independence Day was a wild times. We had an, quite the assortment of dancers. Um, Robotron was there. Uh, Mashed Potato, the rapper, was there. Started off strong with quite a few people in the crowd. Um, then lost a lot of people, alienated a lot of people um, with the assless chaps that Casey decided to to wear. For whatever reason, I decided to be a character from Magic Mike, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character. I see a lot of lawbreakers around here. So I walked down this alley and I gotta say, like, like the show that I saw was so irregular, I'm not even sure, like, my memory could grasp it to keep hold of it. I think there was somebody in a gorilla outfit, and, uh, and there were indeed uh, half-naked women, as promised. I think I do recall Mondo and Casey trying to recreate the sexy pottery wheel scene from Ghost. By the end of that particular Independence Day, the event organizers on that stage were so pissed at us that I remember the guy walking up to me and saying, I want to punch you in the dick. Hey, 
To be fair, we had given them a warning that that's what the schizo show was going to do. We emailed them and emailed them and emailed them and never got responded back. So check your emails, guys. Hey guys, sorry if you are came. I just wanted to um, thank, thank, thank you again for um, the, uh, 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 a mix of rock and roll and burlesque and lots of belly dance. How are you going to keep these people entertained? You need to make sure you're having a fun time too because the crowd can tell. self-confidence a lot when it came to dancing. Everybody's weird. Um, we are weird for the sake of entertainment. Others may be weird because they have a sex hang-up. I prefer to be weird for the sake of entertainment. So this weird dude approached me asking if I wanted to answer some questions about ECC? Which at first I thought was some kind of government agency, but I guess it's some sort of weird electronic circus cult that I've been performing with for like six or seven-ish years. I don't know. Wouldn't be the first time I got drunk and joined a cult. So Kyle. What was it like performing with the magical, mystical, mythical Janan Al Jahani? During uh, certain songs, go into a, a drum solo, which you do her belly dance and with the drums, and we never rehearsed it. It was always spontaneous in the moment. What was going to happen? <laughs> The spontaneity around everything was, I think, just magical. You get on that wavelength and you really connect with somebody going through that, and uh, she's just fantastic. found a lot of camaraderie with a lot of women uh, in the scene. Uh, Mike was doing creme, Casey was doing erotic and rolls, um, and instead of competing with one another, they just decided to kind of join forces. <laughs> we
do you see your future being with the band? Well, I have this idea. Something like that. So much fun. It is possibly one of my favorite gigs to do. It is like, ooh, electric. Yeah, it's electric. It's super fun because you guys will play off us too. Tell us about Bossy Girls and Odd TV. Uh, Bossy Girls Pinup Joint is um, a bar that sort of became like the new Spankies for us. Uh, one of our favorite places to play and perform. The name Bossy Girls comes from the original owner's stage name, Bossy Girl, whom is Sandy Rollins. She was also an ECC member. She came from my hometown of Defiance, Ohio. She was the first dancer for Electro Cult Circus at the Erotic and Roll shows when they were the Save the Stripper shows, which is a whole different story altogether. Her and her partner, Amber, both started Bossy Girls, and then it was taken over by Mike Folker, whom is our guitarist and ECC member, as you know. And now it is co-owned by Mike and Cora Helton, whom is the leader of the Sex Kitten Perlesque. I started a talk show there called Oddfellows Oddities Variety Talk Show. Guys, thank you so much for coming out to Oddfellows Oddities. No. All right. Nobody. Nobody else gets that. Instead of a rape, my conquest with destiny is me. Follow up in your blocks, beat that real hip hop. Talk show. Full of variety. Oh, okay. Who's definitely not holding us against our will. Yeah? Oh, hi. Oh, how's it going? William, are you privy to any deep, dark ECC cult secrets? A lot of stuff uh, makes it into the show, but, you know, there's some stuff on the cutting floor, nothing bad, but just, you know, little things that, like, I get a hold on to and cherish that nobody will ever get to see. So that's the fun thing about, you know, working with them and putting stuff on the podcast and, you know. They kind of explained the real backstory, but like I wasn't allowed to put that out there. So maybe like you guys will figure that out on this 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 documentary. Like I mean, I've got it on this computer, some audio file somewhere that they they reveal all the secrets, and uh, hopefully that might be what this is because I've been holding it in for a while, and I got to tell you, man, I need to get it out there. So like I'm not gonna leak it, but who is your favorite ECC member? Um, my favorite one? Uh, I can't, I can't say that. Um, I mean, I can tell you who my least favorite one is, so. Tell us about all the different versions of ECC. To be honest, there's been a lot of people 
in this band. Um, sometimes I feel like Lauren Michaels of SNL with all the different people coming and going in the band. Um, I've loved them all in one way or the other. Uh, some of us have had issues. Uh, some of us are still friends. Who was the most troubling member of ECC? Most troubling member of the band, I'd have to say, would be uh, Carl the Monkey. Carl the Monkey started off as our guitar player, then he became one of our many drummers. And um, then he started biting people. And uh, one of our members was seriously injured. That was really turned me off of my yeah. knees. So how does it feel to be the 10th drummer of ECC? Who? Electro Cult Circus. Who the, the fuck's that? The band you, you, you drum with currently. Uh. You got anything to drink? Yeah, yeah. I think the current lineup of ECC gets along pretty well. Pretty, pretty low drama. Why? What have you heard? Hey, Sam. You want to try playing a C note on that? Fuck you, you piece of shit, you burn out of flavor! was a really good year. Everything was going great. And then quarantine hit, and everything came to a screeching halt. But, we finally got time to work on this documentary that we've been wanting to work on for the last 20 years. Would you guys like to see it? It's called Under the Big Top. Roll it! exactly how we envisioned the film ending. Unfortunately, our director, Linda Baron Charles III, has gone missing. He stopped returning our phone calls. Something to do with we weren't able to pay him enough money and we were, honestly were not sure he was kind of, we just don't think he was doing a quality enough job for the amount of money we were paying him. So we're gonna wrap this up ourselves. Um, first off, thank you guys so much for watching the whole movie. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And now you're an official cult member. That's right. To retrieve your official ECC membership card, call the number below. Call this number. And when you call that number, tell whoever answers, I want to be in the cult! Alright? You'll get a t-shirt as well. Here's a testimonial from one of our satisfied cult members. 
Thank you so much, ECC, for making me an official member of the cult. I look forward to being part of this cult and doing anything you say uh, and coming to every show and not complaining about having to come to every show. I will pay my union dues on time. I am a proud member of ECC and I have not been paid for this endorsement.